click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of Machine Design 1. We are right now learning about the things which are going to be subjected to the fluctuating loads. And what are the fluctuating loads? We are going to do a thorough inspection of what are the aspects and introduction part of this topic. So students, whatever things we have learned till now, they have undergone certain loads and all of them are categorized under static loading. But in today onwards, we are going to look at the loads or the objects which undergo the loads which are not constant, which are not static and they vary with the time. And such loads are called fluctuating loads. So let us begin with the first primitive. The primitive state is that fundamental stresses are the normal stresses, they may be bending stresses, they may be shear stresses. These all are the fundamental stresses which get induced in the body whenever there are loads acting. These particular equations are called elementary equations or those elementary equations are nothing but the imperial relations which are designated for this particular kind of stresses. We know that they dominate the assumed theories and what are the assumed theories? that the cross section will be uniform, the material will be homogeneous, these properties will be isotropic and many more. So considering all such assumed theories, these elementary equations are derived. But if you see in real life, the things are not same. For example, in real life there will be irregularities in the cross section, irregularities in the material composition, irregularities in the loadings. And many more and that's why due to all these irregularities these assumed theories do fail and since they do fail all these equations are not able to perform the way they are supposed to perform and that's why they say that in predicted results which are the assumed theories results they are not equal to the real life solutions and that's why we have to consider betterments and what are those betterments we are going to look in today's session students so far what we know is there are static loads and accordingly we do the design. For example in the previous chapter which is the static load design we have done the design of those components which consider only static loadings. For example either bending loads or either the tensile loads or either axial loads and so on. But in real life the loads may change with time also. For one instance, if the load is 10 kN, for the next instance, it may increase or decrease also. So the fluctuating loads are nothing but the function of time. So with time, the magnitude, the nature, the direction may change. Now it was observed that 80% failure in the industries was caused due to the fluctuating loads and not the static loads. And that's why this particular area is very essential to look after. Ahead, the stress variation and the pattern are unpredictable. And why it is so? So far, whichever we have done in static loading, we can predict the load, we can predict the stress, we can predict the nature of stress, whether it will be tensile or compressive, will it be increasing or will it be decreasing. But in case of the fluctuating loads, since the fluctuation is not constant, it may not be varying with the time, it may be varying with some other factors, it may vary with the surface, it may vary with the coordinates and many more factors. We can't predict the stresses and the variation that take place in the stresses as usual. And that's why we need to take care of this 80% domain area. Next thing is all these load can be or all these stresses can be categorized under one category and that's called cyclic loading. They're called cycling because they may come back in the same pattern or different pattern or they may repeat themselves, they may reverse themselves or they will have this similar behavior after equal interval of the time. And that's why they all are categorized under cyclic loading. So three such cyclic loadings are considered. The first one, is the fluctuating load or alternating load we can call it then it is repeated and then it is reversed according to the loads the stresses will also be categorized in the same manner 
fluctuating or alternating stresses, repeated stresses and the reversed stresses. So here one thing you need to understand that cyclic stresses is a broad domain whereas these three are their subtypes or the subdomains. Students going ahead with these three categories let us try to understand the differences and two important terminologies which we are going to introduce today which we are going to look at and going to use again and again in further analysis. Let us look at the graph there are three different graphs given let's try to understand what are the graphs are they are basically all the graphs if you look at properly are the stress versus time so basically we have plotted the stresses occurring with respect to the time now there are natures of this variations variations in the stresses if you see all of them are sinusoidal so the wave form is a sinusoidal form there are certain terminologies which we need to understand. For example, we are going to consider the variation with respect to time in the y-axis which is nothing but distress. Due to this variation, there are certain terminologies which we are going to look at. The terminology, the first terminology will call it the maximum one. So it is the maximum stress, the maximum value or the peak value with respect to the time axis is called maximum stress. The minimum one will of course be the minimum stress value. In case of their mean, if we take the mean of maximum and minimum, we can call it that it's a mean stress. Ahead of it, there is another value which is nothing but the difference between the maximum and the minimum stress. Let me highlight this minimum stress as well. So the difference between maximum and minimum will yield sigma a and that is called the amplitude value. So these are the four types of stresses designated in this particular chart. The same parameters in more or less proportion are expressed in the consecutive charts. So let us look at them. The first one is standing for the fluctuating stresses. The second one for repeated stresses and third one is the reverse stresses. So let us begin with the fluctuating stresses. We need to know what are the characteristics of this kind of stresses. In case of fluctuating stress, as we have seen in the graph itself, the first point is it has a sinusoidal waveform. It changes in the sinusoidal waveform with respect to time, of course. Ahead of it, there are two limits. The first one is the lower one that is called sigma minimum. And the maximum one is the sigma maximum and that is how the variations are. Between these two limits there are two more factors. The first one is the represented as of course sigma minimum and sigma amplitude. What we have seen is sigma mean is nothing but the average of these two and sigma amplitude is nothing but the difference between these two. You can see this is sigma maximum, sigma minimum difference between them is nothing but the sigma amplitude. Going ahead, we can have the nature of the stresses in the fluctuating loads, maybe the stresses, maybe the compressive stresses or maybe the combination of tensile and the compressive stresses that may vary with the given case but these are the types of stresses that may be considered in the fluctuating stresses for given one case. If it is a case of shear stress, similar stresses in the shear manner will appear here. Moving ahead with the repeated stresses, what we have is again the waveform is again sinusoidal. There are two limits again but this time the limits are the zero to maximum. So what we can see is the instead of minimum stress, this stress is zero. So basically minimum stress is equal to zero. So in this case, there will be no minimum stress. It will be always zero, but there will be certain value of maximum stress. Hence, the mean stress will be equal to the amplitude stress. In this case, the mean stress and the amplitude stress will remain the same. And how they will be same, we are going to look at afterwards. Moving ahead with the reverse stresses, the waveform is again sinusoidal. In this case, the amplitude or the value magnitude of maximum stress and minimum stress are equal. If you see the distribution about the time axis is same. 
above the time axis and below the time axis. In that case, if considered positive, the maximum value will remain above the time axis. If considered negative, the minimum value will remain below the time axis. So one thing is very clear that the mean stress in this case is going to be zero because the maximum and minimum value which are going to be opposite in nature in sign of course will cancel out each other. Whereas the amplitude value will be either equal to the sigma maximum like this or it will be equal to the sigma minimum. Ahead of it complete reversal from tension to the compression and that is why they are called reversed. If you see this properly if I consider this one is positive and this one is negative, in that case you can see that the tensile load and the compressive load are taking place each other after equal interval of time. And that's why we can say there is a complete reversal from tension to the compression. And that's why they are called reverse traces. So moving ahead with this particular terminology, let us quickly revise. Sigma maximum is the maximum stress sigma minimum is of course the minimum stress now one thing is very clear that these two stresses can be of tensile nature or can be of compressive stretcher or it can be of tensile plus compressive to certain margin Moving ahead with sigma m and sigma a which are the very prominent for this design aspect are called mean stress and amplitude stress. This basically indicates a function of average of maximum and minimum. And this particular indicates the function of difference of maximum and minimum. At the end, let us look at the theoretical calculations of mean stress and the amplitude stress. As we have seen, mean stress is related with the average and the function of average. We can say that it is exactly half of sigma maximum and sigma minimum whereas since sigma amplitude is the function of difference we can say that it is exactly half of sigma maximum minus sigma minimum so basically these are two main equations that we need to consider we need to understand and we have to apply again and again in further calculation part so at the end let us quickly look at the summary of this topic. What we have seen is, we have seen the nature of fluctuating loads. They vary with time and that's why the stresses that are caused because of them are not predictable or the patterns are not predictable. In order to understand them, we have categorized them into three main categories. Basically, it is the cyclic loading or cyclic stresses, then fluctuating loading, reverse stresses, and the repeated stresses. Based on that, we have seen different graphs of each of them and we have tried to understood what are the terminologies involved and how their variations are. At the end, we have gone through the formulae or the theoretical formulae of main stress and the amplitude stress. So that was from my side. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.